All right, physics reaction video number 54. Um, today I did a search for AP physics homework filtered by this week. So this is fresh. Here we go. All right, guys, we're going to take a look at number two. Um, so I want to think about setting this problem up. I have a, I kind of take this and scooch it over a little bit. So I have <laughs> a, uh, M equals two kilograms. Yeah, flat, smooth track. So it's coming along right here. Uh, v naught, which is the same as V. So it's really interesting that the yellow doesn't follow the strokes. It's like, so the it'll be yellow here, and then she'll write a bunch of text before the yellow moves. It's actually less distracting and does it is doing its job, which is you know getting you to look at it. So while she's doing this, let me think about this problem here. So smooth track, so it's a rough incline, smooth track again. Okay, so we know initial speed, final speed. These two, of course, have to be uh, different. <laughs> Actually, they wouldn't be. Oh, that's so interesting. Wouldn't it be interesting if these were exactly the same? I guess this could be anything. This could be faster, slower. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm always thinking about that because when I do quizzes with my students, I'll just randomly put up numbers here. And sometimes you put up a number that's not possible. Um, all right. How much work is... Okay, well, I'll let her explain. 1 equals 2 meters per second. Block slides down a rough incline. L equals 5 meters. And it has a vertical height here of height equals 0.3 uh, meters. Onto another flat surface, the block's final speed is 3 meters per second. Okay, I feel like that's somebody who's waiting. Yes, all right. So, let's see what they want to know. Hmm? How much work is done by the force of friction as the block slides down the rough incline? I love okay, that. Well, I love that italics. Do you understand what we need to do? We need to say E total before should equal plus, I guess I could say plus the work done, mm. yeah, should equal E total after. And what energy does it have before? Tell me the type. It has EK initial and what? <laughs> and UG initial. Okay, because it's high and it's moving. So it's interesting that she keeps saying initial and, and using the sort of not subscript, the zero subscript. Um, and she uses F for final. So it's kind of a mix. I, I guess I, I if I'm going to use final, I tend to use initial. But, um, oh, and even the, the way the problem has it written here. So I'm guessing that she works with her students. She's like, okay, let's just start. Our, our initial uh, location is always going to be with, with a zero. So that's, that's really interesting. I like this question. I'm like, how much work is done by the force of friction? I guess my question for you guys is, is it worth it to just do how much work is done, right? Because um, you could think about, like, the work done by gravity and friction. And that's just easy. It's going to be the kinetic energy before plus something has to equal the kinetic energy after. Um, but by saying what's done by the work done by the force of friction, well, luckily we have an, a different way to calculate the gravitational uh, work, I guess. We'll just, we'll, we'll do that as a potential energy calculation, and then we'll do this, this work by friction is going to be less than that. Um, you know, when I was saying before that you could pick any numbers you want, I guess you couldn't, hmm, there's an upper limit to what this can be based on based on this height, right? So that it's, this can only be going so fast if the coefficient of friction goes down to zero. And then um, plus whatever work friction does, yeah, and it may be plus or minus, we don't know yet, equals, what's what does it have here? EK final, and I'm gonna say UG final, even though oh. we should notice that it's on the ground here. So we're using you know, some zero, so that's going to be nothing. Okay? Ah, that was cool too. So um, can you set, write those equations? Can you do it? That yellow circle is so interesting. Okay. 
Does that look good? Looks good to me. All right. I like the pauses. So let's there, find there's some those, sort of audience here. It's not clear to me whether it's virtual or not. So it's going to be one half. <laughs> Just run out of room. Two kilograms. Yeah. Uh, times two meters per second squared plus um, two kilograms times. It's an interesting example where mass doesn't cancel, right? So the if you write this um, friction work as the normal force times the distance and the normal force is going to be, you know, some angle, although we don't know what the angle is, right? Eventually you could get the mass to show up in this term too, and then the mass would cancel for everybody. Um, and what that would show you is that as long as the materials are the same, these speeds would be the same, um, but it's not asking that, right? It's asking for the total work. So, so we are going to have to put these two kilograms in a few times. Um, H is 0.3 meters times 10 I'm oh, sorry I mean not that it doesn't just work exactly the same way but uh, times what 10 newtons <laughs> per kilogram is gravity Ooh, love it. times uh, <laughs> 0.3 meters all right so that was really interesting what she just did there so um, she had the mass here uh, sorry, the distance here, the height, I guess. And then she erased it and she said something subtle. She's like, well, it's not going to matter, but I want to write it down. So because in the order here is M times G times H. And so she wants to have the M and then the G and then the H. Um, but, you know, uh, it doesn't matter the order when you're doing um, multiplication. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious whether it's worth it to, to make that correction. I think for some students it really is. They'd be like, huh, what, huh? Totally confused. Um, and so having a, a sort of one-to-one -one correlation with the previous line down to the next line, man, I have really struggled with that. Where I'll, I'll make just sort of a mental adjustment to my algebra and write the next line, and, and I can hear it. I can sense it in the room um, that, that people are like, what, 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 what? And it just wasn't worth it, right? Here I thought I was saving time, and it just wasn't worth it because I had to go back and fix it. Um, the other thing is two things, right? So she used 10 instead of 9.8, love that. And she used newtons per kilogram, which is exactly what this is all about, right? When we're talking about the work done by... Um, well, I guess when we're talking about potential energy of gravity or the work done by gravity, this is a way better way of thinking about the units, right? For every kilogram, there's 10 newtons um, uh, a force being done and how hard does the force act? It acts this far. So um, I, lo I love the fact that that's the units that she chose there. Yeah. All right. Plus work final should equal... It's interesting, like waiting to the last minute to um, to put this alone on its own side. So still, this line that she's writing out here is is a one to one correlation with this top line. Obviously, eventually she needs to make this one be alone. So maybe bring this stuff over. I guess maybe gonna plunk this stuff into a calculator before for getting there. Um, I'm also curious whether this is gonna be a sig fig argument here. So all of you sig fig crazy people think that there's only one. Remember, I don't care about sig figs <laughs> uh, when we're doing homework problems, so I don't really care. But it's interesting to think about how, because by the technical rules of sig figs, there's only one in, in this entire problem. It'll be interesting to see if she follows through with that. One half, uh, two kilograms, and V final is three meters per second squared. Yeah? Awesome. Okay. Yeah, so far so good. Okay, so two. Two squared is four. Half of two is one. Oh, so this looks like it's four joules. Does that make sense? Watch me, because I'll do something wrong. I really will. <laughs> two times ten is twenty point three times twenty is what? What's a what's a third of twenty? Six point six seven. Okay, this says six. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And then equal. <laughs> Uh, plus work by friction, whatever that is, equals uh, half of the mass, which is mass is two, so half of that is one. And the new velocity is three. Three times three is nine. Nine times so nine joules. Yeah. Cool. So it looks to me like the total is ten joules plus work done by friction equals nine joules. Can you tell cool. me what work is done by friction? Cool. I love how this is setting it up to be negative. Not just one joule, but right, because does friction give the energy to the box or take it away? 
Love and that. Plus, it has to be negative to, to work, doesn't it? That was awesome. I wonder if she's going to erase all this to the next part. Okay. So, um, if you want a picture of this, please take it because I'm going to have to delete this and move forward. Cool. If you all want right. a picture of this, please In take five, it. Love it. Four, three, two, one. Boom. Okay. <laughs> that was great. So, let's do the next part. <laughs> I really love that. Okay, so can you guys remind me um, how much was our uh, how much was our kinetic energy at the beginning? I feel like it was four. How much was our gravitation? Six. Six. Okay, and then we don't know about this, right? I mean. So it's interesting, right? So that gravitational uh, thing was one third of 20, which they said was six. And I would say it's probably closer to seven. So, um, you know, will that um, affect anything, right? So that rounding down versus rounding up, trying to keep it to single digit of precision. Um, so let's see here. So this should have been maybe closer to seven. Um, is, there's no spring force. I see. And then she's going to have a minus one here. Yeah. So this is going to hold together. I think basically she had this wrong yeah so this and this and it's not wrong right I mean I'm just trying to figure out whether this sort of um, quick estimate is going to get anybody in trouble like is there going to be a part C or D or E where it's like wait a minute this is not working out I don't understand I think not because I think that there would have to have been something else given in the problem to just sort of make the students feel like wait a minute this is this is not working out so I think that's really interesting. We know now, right? And then this over here was, what, nine? Mm -hmm. That was true, right? And so it says that this has to be negative one. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay, great. Calculate the force of friction acting when the block is on the rough track. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, um, the work done by friction, right? So looking at this little yellow circle again, notice that it's incredibly responsive when she's not actually writing. And so it's all jerky around. Every little mouse flick or hand flick that she's doing is, is showing up in the yellow circle's placement. But as soon as she puts the pen down and starts to write something, the yellow kind of freezes until she lets go again. That's, that's really interesting. Which we know, don't we? Negative one joules. Okay, the work done by friction should equal force friction, right? It should equal F dot mm. X. Yeah, so what distance is the rough track? Do we know? Do we have a distance for that? I can't see it. I guess I could look on the paper. <laughs> Let's see. I think it was five. Oh, L. Okay. So it's L. Five meters? All right. So it looks to me like, could it be this easy? As long as the force friction and L are parallel. Oh, I love that. I, I was wondering. Are. And look at this. If I go to negative one joules over five meters equals force friction. I'd like you to see how the units work out. Remember that it, what is a joule made up of? Do you remember? Newton meters. Newton meters. It's a Newton meter. Yeah. <laughs> so the Looks meters like Newton cancel meter. and you're left with <laughs> Newtons, right? So like cool. point 0.2 or something. Yeah. Love and it. What's one fifth? Point 0.2 ish. <laughs> okay. Looking good. All right. So I just wanted to comment a little bit about the dot product and then the directionality here, right? So um, this dot product get, a sort of achieves another negative sign because they're in opposite directions. Um, so she just did it as a numeric thing. She's like, oh, well, they're in the same direction, so I can just write them down. 
But then she got a, a negative answer, right? So she got a negative answer, which means, well, they're, wait a minute, but they're in the same direction, but it's negative. Oh, that's pointing in the opposite direction. So there's some really interesting sort of directionality that you have to use when you're thinking about these dot products. But I mean, actually, if you were to ask these students, what direction does the frictional force act? Oh, well, it slows it down, so it pushes back up the hill. So that's really, really interesting to me. Man, this was really cool. I loved um, just the, the quick estimations being done. Um, it was nice round numbers, so we were able to do it all in our head. Um, the the LOL diagrams, you know, very straightforward. Um, and I really liked how she, you know, sort of got some answers from the students there, right? Some, some things that, hey, does this, you know, check me? I might make a mistake. That was really cool. All right, everybody have a great day. And remember, physics teachers are awesome.